A radioactive isotope linked to water from power plant cooling canals has been found in high levels of Biscay Bay, confirming suspicions that Turkey Point's aging canals are leaking to a nearby national park. According to a study released on Monday by Miami-Dade County Mayor Carlos Jimenez, watering sampling in December and January found tritium levels up to 215 times higher than normal in ocean water. The report doesn't address risk to the public or marine life, but tritium is typically marred as a tracer of nuclear power plant leaks or spills. The study comes two weeks after a Tallahassee judge or the utility in the state to clean up the state's plant's nuclear cooling canals after concluding that they had caused a massive underground saltwater plume to migrate west, threatening a well field that supplies drinking water to the Florida Keys. The judge also found the state had failed to address the pollution by crafting a faulty management plan. The latest test, critics say, raised new questions about what they're long suspected, that canals that began running too hot and salty the summer after FPL overhauled two reactors to provide more power could also be polluting the bay. How much damage is that cooling canal system causing the bay is a question to be answered, said Everglades Law Center attorney Julie Dick, who had not had a chance to review the report. There are a lot more unknowns than knowns, and it just shows how much more attention we need to be paying to that cooling canal system. County commissioners who have kept a close eye on the canals and are objected to the state's management plan or the additional monitoring of the bay water last year. The commission is scheduled to discuss the canals along with another study by the University of Miami hydrologist David Chin examining problems linked to adding more water to the canals at a meeting on Tuesday. FBO officials declined to comment Monday evening. Over the last two years, problems with the canals have worsened exponentially after the 2013 plant expansion to increase power output by 15 percent. The canals began running dangerously high. FPL officials blame problems on an algae bloom that worsened after the canals were temporarily shut down during the project. But when a summer drought hit in 2014, temperatures spiked at least twice when temperatures soared to over 102 degrees. The utility was nearly forced to power down reactors. After obtaining permission from nuclear regulators to operate the canals at 104 degrees, the hottest in the nation, FPL officials began applying a course to fix the canals by pumping in millions of gallons of fresh water from a nearby canal, as well as increasing the amount of water drawn from the Florida aquifer. They've also talked about using sewage to cool down the nuclear reactor. The growing saltwater plume triggered regulatory scrutiny. After the county complained, the state ordered a new management plan called an administrative order to address problems. Florida Department of Environmental Protection has declined to cite FPL for violating state water laws and instead crafted a plan that critics say gave the utility license to continue to pollute. The plan, hastily approved two days before Christmas, was quickly challenged by county officials as well as environmentalists and even the rock miners. The county settled its challenge in October after FBL agreed to a series of actions to clean up the plume that included constructing a barrier made up of extraction wells. The utility also agreed to try to use salty water from the Florida aquifer rather than fresh water from the nearby canal intended for Biscayne Bay or treated wastewater from a nearby county sewer plant. The decree also called for increased monitoring, first indication that canals had leaked into the bay. After those findings, staff and FPL returned for another round of tests and to get a better read on what is happening in the bay. Early sampling was taken near the bottom of the bay where researchers expected to find evidence of the groundwater plume that had been documented west of the canals. For the most recent round, water was studied at the varying depths. Samples found that while water at the surface met mostly county water quality standards, nearly all the standards were exceeded at the bottom. Hence, we have the heavier metals, the heavier isotopes that are finding its way to the bottom of Biscayne Bay. Eat up those lobsters, buddies. The county also looked for traces of tritium. Earlier sampling was taken near the bottom of the bay where researchers expected to find evidence of the groundwater plume that had been documented west of the canals. Tritium, 215 times over the limit. For the last five years, the report said that cooling canals had tritium levels at 60 to more than 800 times higher than in the bay. 
tritium at the bottom of the bay close to the canals ranged from more than 130 to 215 times higher, high enough to suggest a consistent flow from the sprawling cooling systems. County staff concluded the findings are the most compelling evidence the canal water has spread into the bay. While the county consent decree requires FPL to address the spread, staff said more study is needed to determine exactly what's going on and come up with a long-term remedy for cleaning up the canals.